Hello class. So are the modern physics questions giving you a special kind of problem, relatively? Well, it all hinges on these three equations, which are essentially the same equation, only one refers to the length of a moving object, one refers to the time that elapses for a moving object, and the third for the mass. Because of these equations, as objects approach the speed of light, we find that they become shorter, slower, or heavier. The key to solving these problems is to correctly identify the frames of reference, which is the stationary value and which is the moving value, and then solving for the correct variable. This requires some particular attention to your algebra skills. Let me demonstrate what I mean about identifying the given information and plugging it into the equation. Here it talks about somebody wanting to travel 100 years into the future but only using one year of their time traveling to do so. One of these times is T and the other one is TO. The, the O values are always those in the moving frame of reference. In this case, the traveler wants for there to be 100 Earth years. Earth is considered the stationary frame of reference. Traveling in a spaceship is the motion, and so the one year time would be the TO. The question is what is the velocity? How fast would they have to travel? So we're going to take our equation, T equals TO divided by the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. We're solving for V, which is currently squared, part of a fraction being subtracted from a whole number in a square root in the bottom of an equation. So as you can see, you're going to have to bring some algebra. Here's the equation with the given information substituted in. The first thing I'm going to do is some cross multiplication. Next, I'm going to square both sides and get rid of that square root sign. The next thing I want to do is change the expression from being um, an algebra expression subtracted from a whole number of 1. So let's get the numbers on one side and the letters on the other. Since both sides are now negative expressions, they can both become positive expressions. Now I want v, so I need to move the c squared to the other side of the equation by multiplying both sides times v squared. And finally, all I need to do now is take the square root of both sides to eliminate the v squared and have it be solved for just v. And the square root of 0.999, let's try that with v squared, v squared is 0.999. works on this equation. If the scenario is changed to find mass instead of time, it's still, still the same equation. Of course, it helps if the uh, answer provided for you to check your work was solved to the correct variable and had the correct answer. However, we should be able to work beyond these things and then bring these questions to class. So let's take this equation for special relativity to find the mass and solve for the MO. A quick cross multiplication gets us to this point where the MO is the single variable on one side of the equation and the rest of the expression is on the other side of the equation. Now we just need to plug in the rest of our given information and solve. Under our square root sign we have quite the mess because we have 0.9c which is squared over c squared but in fact this is nice because now c squared and c squared will cancel and the math under the square root is really 1 minus 0.9 squared. And we can resolve that with the calculator. It has no units because those canceled out. And it's 0 0.436. That's the square root of the difference between 1 and 0.9 squared. Now I just multiply these two numbers together. And I should have my value for the mass of the traveling proton which correctly stated should be 7.28 times 10 to the negative 28 kilograms. E 
equals mc squared is a relatively straightforward equation. You take a mass, multiply it times the square of the speed of light, which is 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, and you get a huge energy outpour. But just for mental ability sake, there are questions every now and then like this one, which really is just a conversion question, and the conversion factors are given. It says a ton of TNT releases 4.184 gigajoules of energy. The A-bomb had the strength of 16 kilotons. So we just need to convert. Let's start with the 16 kilotons. A kiloton is 1,000 tons. This says that for each ton, it was 4.184 gigajoules of energy. But we don't need gigajoules. We need joules. One gigajoule, the conversion factor reminder says, is 10 to the 9 joules. So the units will all cross cancel. Kilotons cancels, tons cancels, gigajoules cancels. We'll have an answer in joules once we do the math. When you multiply 16 times 10 to the 3 times 4.184 times 10 to the 9, you get an answer of 6.69 times 10 to the 13 joules. And that's the amount of energy. You use that in the next equation, E equals mc squared, to solve for m. So use these few pointers and try to complete the sheet and be ready to discuss it in class tomorrow.